the Bush administration is in a trap. They're in a trap because they've made a commitment to preserve the existing energy paradigm in this country, the existing industrial paradigm of big oil, big automobiles, big highways, and all that goes with it. And the only way to preserve that paradigm is to gobble up more and more of the rest of the world's oil. There is no other way to do it. The only way to get out of this is to reduce our dependency on petroleum, period. We have to consume a lot less oil in our day-to-day -day lives. There is no other way to break out of this trap. consumption of almost everything uh, is going up dramatically and has the potential to, to rise to many times the current level because of the fact that you've got large parts of the world population, China, India, Africa, etc., that are really just entering the stage where they have people that are having you know, amenities like transportation, uh, heating, air conditioning, and all the rest of it. The Chinese want to have every one of them, once they make this transition from the agrarian, poor, thousand dollar a year uh, existence, they want to buy a private car. Consider this, there is 1.7 people per car in the United States, there are 117 people per car in China. If every Chinese were to consume the way Americans do, you know, we would need six planet Earths to support the, the global economy. China is certainly becoming a, a big consumer of almost everything, and that's not too surprising given that China has 1.3 billion people, and it's had a uh, an economy that's been growing at 8 to 10 percent a year really consistently for the last, you know, at least 15 years. We've seen that most obviously in the oil market, but uh, Chinese demand has, has driven up everything from oil prices to steel prices, cement prices, wood prices, almost everything over the last couple of years. A sizable chunk of China's industrial generated surplus will have to be spent to acquire energy, which then in turn will help them further improve their industrialization and it will create further energy demand and it becomes this vicious cycle. They are absolutely terrified about this cycle of increase in demand, further increase in industrialization, and increase in demand over and over again. It cascades from there on. China has gone berserk in its energy demand. There has never been a country in the history of the energy business that has increased its energy demand by 20% in one year, and China did it in 2005. China's increasing its, its oil imports at a dramatic rate. China has now become the world's second foremost oil importing nation after the U.S. The United States will not be the reality of the world economy over the next 13, 15 years from now. China is going to be the reality in the world energy situation and in the world economy, in fact. They already have a $600 B billion dollar surplus, trade surplus this year. They don't care about the oil price.
They are going to go out there and get the energy. We are, as we speak, in a horrendous geopolitical contest with the Chinese for the same energy sources. They are everywhere in the world and they are far more aggressive than the United States. The, the trillion dollar question is in fact, is there enough energy to supply the Chinese needs? Oil is the most important source of energy in the world today. It provides about 40% of the world's energy supply, far more than any other source. Control over the flow of oil translates into immense political power and political influence. And it has been the policy of the United States since World War II that it be the United States and no other country that controls this vital source of world power. The stakes are high. Iraq is already a rich and powerful country that possesses the world's second largest reserves of oil and over a million men under arms. Our country now imports nearly half the oil it consumes and could face a major threat to its economic independence. Much of the world is even more dependent upon imported oil and is even more vulnerable to Iraqi threats. I don't think anybody except think tank types and ideologues believe that we're in the Middle East for democracy. The U.S. relationship with Saudi Arabia, which is our most important relationship in the Middle East, goes from the White House to a royal palace, which is inhabited by monarchs of the 14th century variety, like the kings that we fought a war against in 1776. The Shah of Iran was our ally, Saddam Hussein was our ally, the government of Pakistan today is our ally, the government of Saudi Arabia today is our ally. These are all countries that have very poor human rights records and that are essentially run by different forms of authoritarian rule. They have existed largely in a deal, particularly with the Saudis, that they would become our partner in the stabilization of the oil world in return for us guaranteeing their security, both externally but also as a government. Let me be clear, the sovereign independence of Saudi Arabia is of vital interest to the United States. look at this from the perspective of Saudi Arabians. They see Americans protecting the royal family against resistance. The Saudi Arabian National Guard, whose function is to protect the royal family and silence dissent, always has been armed by the United States. As far as they're concerned, we're totally complicit with the repression, the lack of freedom, the lack of democracy in their country. We are part and parcel of the Saudi dictatorship. I think almost every American, when you push them on that, will nod that that's exactly the case, so that we're not there for democracy.